Now we're going to talk about blockchain as a financial technology, as a fintech. So as you can see right here on Wikipedia, financial technology, also known as the abbreviation fintech, is the technology and innovation that aims to compete with traditional financial methods in the delivery of financial services. So what you're dealing with with a cryptocurrency or a digital currency is essentially a financial technology. The best way that I could put this is just like how back in the 80s you used to use a VCR, then in the 90s you upgraded to a DVD, now you're streaming on Netflix. So things change. The evolution of the technologies evolve, including in the financial sector, and that's why you have financial technologies. So when you're talking about a cryptocurrency, you're basically talking about something that's using a um, encryption. So that's what it is. It's an encrypted currency. So it goes by cryptocurrency. Now, why would they make it an encrypted currency? Because that has a more secure attribute to it because it's using it, um, the encryption uh, security measures. Okay. And then they add the encryption into a block and then they call it the blockchain, which we'll go on into later on in this video. But before we do that, I want to talk about some things to know about currencies in general, and I'll give you a little bit of a history as to where we are today with fiat currency and how we got here. So uh, what we used to have was what was called the gold standard. So the gold standard was a monetary system in which the standard economic unit of account is based on a fixed quantity of gold. Well, in about the 1970s, we went away from the gold standard. What happened was Richard Nixon, they call it the Nixon shock. So Nixon, uh, in 1971, in response to increasing inflation, the most significant of which were wage and price freezes, surcharges on imports, and unilateral cancellation of the direct international convertibility of the United States dollar to gold, they went away from it in what is called the Bretton Woods system, which was a monetary management established the rules for commercial and financial relations among the United States, Canada, Western Europe, Australia, Japan, after the 1944 Bretton Woods system. Just in case you're curious, when the US dollar first came into action, it was around about 1913 through the Federal Reserve, but it was attached to gold. But as it says here in 1971, we went towards what is now called a fiat currency. So a fiat currency is a currency established as money, often by government regulation. Now, it's important to remember, as of right now, none of these digital currencies or cryptocurrencies are run by governments. So that would be something to keep in mind as you're trying to understand if blockchain or cryptocurrency will become the future of money. Will it be widely adopted by the governments? Then there's some people who say, we don't need the government. This is decentralized currency, money for the people, by the people. That's kind of another argument. So all I'm here to do is show you guys the information to give you guys the things to be aware of when you're analyzing certain investments and the industry and the space as a whole. So fiat money does not have use value and has value only because a government maintains its value or because parties engaging in exchange agree on its value. It was introduced as an alternative to commodity money and representative money. So you could see how even the introduction of fiat currency was a uh, technology upgrade to what we had with the gold standard. Now, when it comes to the characteristics of money, you know, these are the six characteristics that a certain currency needs to have. It needs to have durability, can be used repeatedly, whether digitally or paper or coin money. So it can be used, you know, you can send Bitcoin over and over and over again, and I can own one Bitcoin or I could trade it to you or sell it to you or exchange it to you, whatever you want to call the means of exchange. And then it has portability. Portability is that the money must be able to go with you wherever such that is easy to transport as people go from place to place or pl one place to another. So what that means is that with Bitcoin or any cryptocurrency, you have it on, maybe you have it on a, a wallet, uh, whether it be a paper wallet or a app wallet or an exchange or a ledger nano, wherever you store your money, it's kind of there. Now, technically they say you shouldn't hold it on an exchange because 
Exchanges, although they seem like banks, they're not quite banks and they're not quite secure. So you have to find out how you would store the money, but you get the idea of how you can store it. So it does have portability. Divisibility, currency needs to be easily divided to enable a person to buy different products through a means of exchange. So as of right now, cryptocurrencies don't necessarily have that kind of uh, ability to exchange it because there's not a general acceptability like you have with uh, one of the other characteristics, but it does have the divisibility because there's a set circulating supply and then there's a total amount to ever be created. And so you do have a divisibility of it and you can exchange it. There's also the denominations of what is called Satoshis, which if I could compare it to anything would be like cents or to a dollar. So that's a Satoshi. Uniformity. The currency should be the same value and have the same characteristics. So that means that one Bitcoin universally is worth $9,476 at the time I'm making this video. And that's all Bitcoin that are in circulation have that same value. And then there's scarcity or limited supply, which applies to the um, the limited supply with a high demand. So there, there has to be scarcity. You know, there can't just be this abundance amount of never ending money, right? Because there has to be a cap. Right now we're kind of dealing with fiat currency where they just print more and more and more and more money. So it doesn't really have that scarcity, but it still has the demand because it's already an established uh, currency model, right? And then we just talked about generally accepted. So um, you have those six characteristics of money. Now, when it comes to understanding the blockchain and how that works, so a blockchain, originally a blockchain, is a growing list of records called blocks that are linked using cryptography. Each block contains a cryptographic hash of the previous block. So you could kind of get an idea here on Wikipedia of how it works. And one of the things that makes it really interesting is this thing called decentralized. So it's using essentially AI, artificial intelligence, to create a peer-to-peer -peer network. The blockchain eliminates a number of risks that come with data being held centrally. The decentralized blockchain may use ad hoc messaging pass, message passing and distributed networking. Peer-to-peer -peer blockchain networks lack centralized points of vulnerability the computer crackers can exploit. Okay, so people who can crack open the system and get in there and, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting because there's also different types of ways that the blockchains are created. There's proof of work, proof of stake, which we'll touch on more in another video. But a blockchain is basically using crypto cryptography to create strong, secure blocks to make it impenetrable. At least that's what we would assume because it would take a heck of a uh, computation power like a supercomputer on really steroids to really try to penetrate and crack uh, a secure network like a blockchain. Okay, so when it comes to the currency in and of itself, you know, where do these where does this currency come from? In the most specific sense is money in any other form when it is used use in circulation as a medium of exchange, especially circulating banknotes and coins. So you could see how the advent of coins and paper money ultimately led to where we are now with digital currency, which we have here. And here in the United States, we use credit cards typically, or we pay online, do online billing. And most of the money actually exists online on a uh, on a spreadsheet it doesn't exist in physical cash money so we kind of already have digital currencies in this world also known as e-cash right and it's issued by a central bank for example if you go to china or you go to asia you'll notice that they pay for things with their phones kind of like what you have with apple pay or google pay and not necessarily with a credit card credit cards are not very popular in asia so asia is already kind of one step above where we're at with the credit card thing, right? But just to touch on digital currency a little bit more, it's a balance or a record stored in distributed database on the internet. So it's not stored in a vault, right? It's stored on the internet, essentially, if you were to think of it any way that I could best explain it on a spreadsheet, <laughs> okay? In an electronic computer base with digital files or within a stored value card. Examples of digital currencies include cryptocurrencies, virtual currencies, central bank digital currencies, and e-cash. 
So digital currencies exhibit properties similar to other currencies, but do not have a physical form of banknotes and coins. Not having a physical form, they allow for nearly instantaneous transactions. So for example, if I needed to send $200 to my friend in Germany in 1980, I would have to put it either into a check or I would have to send the cash through the mail service carrier and it would arrive in however long it took to get there, whether it was two days or 10 days or 20 days, whatever the case may be. Well, in comes digital currency. I can basically send it with international swift and all that in three days. Well, the point of the new cryptocurrency is to eliminate the middlemen and just have a self executing process, which is like a smart contract or something intermediate inter, uh, in between that, that allows the transactions to execute faster than they did before. But Bitcoin used to be instantaneous, but because of network uh, congestion, uh, it, it no longer is as fast. And also, so are the fees really high, whereas before it used to be, you know, virtually free to send money, but they've made some upgrades to the network through Bitcoin Core, which is a uh, foundation that essentially has been upgrading and modifying Bitcoin ever since 2009 when it first came out. So these are all things to consider when it comes to the money and the history of cryptocurrencies. So thanks for watching this uh, class here and we'll see you guys on the next one.